This is Kendrick Coleman and welcome back to this fifth video in this series where we're looking at the vSphere web client. In the fourth video we looked at actually creating a distributed virtual switch and adding port groups to it. Now in this next video we're actually going to start adding our host to our DVS and then we're going to start creating VM kernel nicks as well. So as you can see we have everything created now what we want to do is we want to start adding our host. The easiest way to do this is of course to just choose the actions tab. So we can go up here to the Actions tab. As you can see, we can add and manage some hosts from here. So let's go ahead and we'll click that. And we don't want to really migrate host networking, remove hosts, and we don't want to just go ahead and do everything at once. We like to do this in a certain way in a certain process to make sure that really nothing goes down. So we'll go ahead and we'll click Next. And we'll go ahead and click the plus button to figure out the host that we want to add. Of course, we want to add both of these hosts that are in our cluster, or actually in the data center as well. And now it's actually going to go and start probing for physical NICs on the actual host themselves that we can choose which ones we want to add over. As we can see in the setup right here, both of my hosts have VM NIC 0 attached to vSwitch 0. But what we want to do is we want to just go ahead and select VM NIC 1 and move this over. Now as you can see in 5.1, it has the ability to, as you can see right now, it's going to auto assign, which is really what we're kind of used to. But now we can actually select and we can choose which uplink we want these to actually go to. Since I want VM NIC 0 to go to uplink 1 and VM NIC 1 to go to uplink 2, that's what I'm going to select. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change both of these to make sure that uplink 2 is the actual second VM NIC or the second actual physical NIC. So again, we'll click Next, and as you can see, we don't want to manage or we don't want to migrate our management network. We want to make sure that we actually have the NICs in place to be able to support the migration of the management network. So we'll go ahead and we'll click next. It's going to start validating the status to make sure all the hosts can actually do this migration. Of course, it's passed. We'll click next. We don't need to migrate any virtual networking because we don't have any. So we'll click next. We'll click finish. And as we can see over here, it's going to start adding the host into the distributed virtual switch. As you can see, the both of the hosts have been added. The port groups are kind of changing right here. We can go to the host section. We can actually see that we're going to have two hosts that are actually connected now. So really cool. So now we actually have everything connected to the hosts themselves. So this is kind of just a host view now once we have everything in here under the DV switch properties. So we can actually go back to the DV switch properties, look at the related objects, and we can look at the hosts in here now. We can see that they are actually connected. Now, if by chance you did do something by mistake, you also have the opportunity to go ahead and you can actually remove the host from the distributed switch with that action as well. Or you can look at the actions within here. So you can actually do this and do all these different things with inside the host itself from a, a different view inside the vSphere web client. So now that we have that done, we need to go ahead and we need to start adding VM kernel ports. So let's go ahead and go back to our host section. We'll go ahead and we'll click on this host right here. And we want to manage it. And by manage it, we want to go ahead and we want to start adding in VM kernel NIC. So we want to go over to this network setting tab. And what we want to do is we want to start creating a few different virtual adapters. As you can see under here in the virtual switches, we actually have DV switch zero and we have, it also has its inherent V switch zero. So this is actually where you could, you come and you could create and you could migrate uh, network adapters, you can go ahead and you can uh, manage physical adapters and you can act, each add host networking as well. So if you actually want to add, um, you know, a virtual machine port group for a standard switch, a VM kernel adapter, um, whatever it is, this is where we're going to do it at. So this is probably one thing I should have mentioned in our earlier videos when we were looking at creating the distributed virtual switch. You can actually create a another uh, vSwitch by saying here, we'll select here, and we'll go ahead and we will create networking, but we'll add a virtual machine port group. We can come over here, and then we can actually create a new switch and choose the maximum number of ports, whatever we want, right? So we can actually do that, click Next. Um, but we don't really want to do that. We don't want to create a new switch, a new vSwitch, but that's how you would do it before. So what we want to do is we actually want to start creating VM kernel ports. So let's go ahead and we will click this Add Host Networking. And from here, we want to create a VM kernel network adapter. We want to select an existing distributed switch port group. We want to add this into vMotion. So that's where we want to start adding this. So we will do that. Click Next. And this is fine right here. We want to make sure we tag this for 
vMotion traffic as well. So let's go ahead and we'll click next. And in the IPv4 status, we will change this to 192.168.20.191 for my particular network. Of course, your mileage may vary on what your network looks like. We'll click next and we will complete it. So now we have created our, as you can see up here, it's adding a NIC to vMotion. It's creating that, that, that vMotion NIC. And we already have this completed. It's selecting the virtual NIC and we have it implemented. If we scroll down, we can see that we have this VMK NIC here. We can choose, we can look at the info on it. We can see everything about it. So a little bit different because before we could actually just look at the actual IP address associated with it. Now we have to click on this information button and actually see the IP address that's actually associated with it. Or we can go to this virtual adapters page now and we can see that VMK1 is right here and we can see everything about it from this point as well. So what I want to do is I want to go back and actually want to just stay here in virtual adapters. I can, like I said, I can add a virtual NIC from here or I can go to the virtual adapters and do it from here. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep adding, um, you know, VM kernel network adapters for what needs to happen right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I will create my, let's do our iSCSI one. So I'll create my iSCSI. Add my, let's see, I don't need to tag anything in here because it's just going to be a VM kernel port where basically the storage array just needs to see it coming from this exact IP address. So we'll say 192, 168, 40, and 191. 255, 255, 24-bit mask. Click Next, Finish. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish creating the rest of the VM kernel ports for my whole entire host. So what that means is I'm going to be creating another iSCSI MPIO. I'm going to create an NFS one and then I'm also going to create a fault tolerant one. I'm going to have that fault tolerant button checked as well. As we saw there's a few different things in here as well that we can create new VM kernel network ports for. Um, so let's just go ahead and say we just choose FT and what we want to do is we want to click next and you can try to see that you have this vSphere replication traffic. So vSphere replication is a new feature in 5.1 where it, it does, of course what you think is does vSphere replication. So go ahead if you want to create your own vSphere replication port group you can do that. Um, tag it, whatever you need to do, and then I will see you back here in a minute. Remember you need to also create everything for your second host too. So if you haven't done this, go into your second host or all the other hosts within your cluster and you also need to configure all your VM kernel adapters over there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start creating all the VM kernel network adapters over here and I will see you back in just a second. And now that we have all of our VM kernel port groups actually created on our second host over here, we need to actually start moving over the second physical NIC. The easiest way to do that is to go back up to the, the virtual switches over here and since we have this uh, VM kernel NIC is actually connected over here still for the management. We need to migrate the virtual network adapter over. So we'll click here and we won't change that. By the way, VM NIC 2 and VM NIC 3, that did change because I had to do some changing around in the back end, but everything's fine. Nothing should be different. So we'll go ahead and we'll change this over to management. Click OK, click Next. Everything is validated, it changed, we'll click next again, and we'll click finish. And now it's actually moving the host management VM kernel port over. Now it's been updated to move over, so as we can see over here, if we look down, we can see that, a little bit scroll back a little bit up, we can see that the VM kernel port actually moved over in the management and it's now over there. So let's go ahead and we will get rid of this vSwitch0 because we no longer need it. And when we do this, it'll free up this other physical adapter. So it's going to go ahead and we'll remove the standard switch. So the virtual switch has been removed. And now we will actually go ahead and we'll click on this DV switch right here. And then we can also just click on this manage physical network adapters. From here, we can click on this right here. Press the plus button. We have VM NIC, the other VM NIC available. As you can see, we have everything that's right here and everything's connected. We're getting information from it. We can click OK. Now it's going to update the physical network adapters. It's going to add it into the DV switch. 
And then there, that's it. We're done. We've got both of our network adapters actually added into this DV switch, and we've got all of our VM kernel network ports up and running. So now we should have full network connectivity within all of our hosts within our environment. So when we come back, we'll start looking at adding in data stores and everything like that. So we'll see you around in the next lesson. Thank you.